Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jalen, and it's almost the end of March, so I'm doing a February wrap-up. I figured it's time, if I'm gonna do it. I have been considering maybe doing a February and March wrap-up together, because March has been banging for reading, February not as much, but I didn't have anything that was like, well I had two books that I kind of didn't like as much, and then heavy hitters in March. So stay tuned for March if you want good, <laughs> really good book recommendations. So let's just get into the book. So first up I have Last Resort by Andrew Lipstein. This is a debut novel that came out I think in January and I really, really liked it. So if you at all like a literary controversy, like if you're on book Twitter and you like when the girls are fighting, like this is a book for you. So basically it's about this guy named Caleb and he's a 27 year old writer and he has finally gotten some attention for a manuscript that he wrote from this agent and so basically it's all about his excitement of actually, you know, becoming a published author. However, the plot thickens. It is learned that he basically took the story that he wrote in this novel from a friend that he used to have. And so basically this friend told him a story about this kind of like wild, I think it's like a weekend or a vacation that he had that was like sexual and kind of personal to him and involved some other people, of course. Caleb, the main character, he makes a novel out of it. So this book is looking all at authenticity, who has the right to tell certain stories and what happens when the law gets involved and people sue each other and the girls are fighting legally. <laughs> um, so it's just a fun romp on that front, seeing how Caleb's navigating this and the poor decisions that he makes regarding proceeding with writing this novel, how he handles it after, once the friend learns about the book, what the friend does to try to get the story back from him, all about greed and corruption and people wanting money for things. And you, as a reader, question, like, shouldn't someone be able to tell any story that they want to, even if someone else tells it to them? Like, writing a novel is... You can use anything in fiction, or can you? Moral gray areas to be found there. And so we see kind of the fallout that ensues once the friend gets involved. Deal with the devil that the Caleb has to make with decisions regarding this novel and all of that. So I love this book because I love a literary scandal. I love drama. <laughs> and this book is just like gossip, drama, legally. I'm a lawyer, so I just was you know fascinated with those aspects of it. All about publishing, and I love books about novelists, and so this book completely worked for me. I think it's a really great debut novel. I read it in one weekend, like I couldn't put it down. So yeah, I highly recommend that one. Next up, I read another kind of rompy book. It's called Hurricane Girl by Marcy Dermansky. This book comes out in June this year, so I had an arc of this one. And first of all, I love this cover. This cover is Stunalina, Gorgina, like incredible. But I will say I was kind of, it was good, but it wasn't, it didn't blow me away by any means. It was really, if you want something like to read in one or two sittings, and if you like DWMs, and also side note, I've had a couple questions about what DWM means. It means depressed woman moving in parentheses through the world fiction. So, you know, dark female set of narratives that follow a woman who's thinky, moving to the world, events happen to her, she thinks about them. That kind of fiction, like, you know, Moshfeg, The Blueprint. This is kind of one of those. It's a third person telling, though. It's about a woman named Allison, and she's 30, and she just fled her movie producer boyfriend, and who has been abusive to her. And so she buys this house on the coast. And so it's on the beach, and she, you know, has a new start. She just buys this house, and then very, very shortly after, I think like a few days after buying the house, a hurricane hits, and her house is gone. And so from there, the plot gets kind of wild. You don't really know where it's going, and so on that front, it's super fun. So basically, after her house is like blown away, essentially, this cameraman stops and like sees her and asks her if they can like interview her about her house, you know, being gone now and the hurricane and what that means for her. And she agrees to like do it, and then he invites her over to his house sketch first of all and so what happens is she goes to this guy's house and something violent happens and she kind of escapes from this man so it's kind of like a little bit of a slasher vibe for a second and so you see her with this injury to her head and her fleeing this guy basically her seeking freedom from there and like how what is she gonna do now that she's been attacked and her house is gone and so you see her from there and so this book is kind of deceptively smart because the prose, what I didn't really like about it is that the prose is super simplistic and just very, very minimal and it is just not intricate whatsoever. It's very simple, not a complex read at all. And I tend to, you know, like that a little bit. I like a little bit of, you know, flowery language or a little bit of more meat on the bones in my fiction. But while the prose is quite simple, I would say, this book is really fun and just like purely a romp. So we see her lose her house, then she gets hit over the head with a glass vase by this guy, and then she leaves and flees to her mom, and she has this injury, 
and then you kind of just see like where she's gonna go and you're not really sure if she's gonna be okay what's gonna happen but there's also this sense that she wants to enact revenge and I'll let you see what happens but if you want something that kind of has like that dark witty telling in its story and you want like a strong plot novel not too complex in terms of its character development like this character doesn't really stay in my mind much but I think somewhat like musings of her mixed with the kind of like horror and funniness of this book really works. And one really funny thing about this book is she seeks solace in like swimming pools and I can relate to that. I think there's a lot of solace to be found in a swimming pool. Yeah, there really is. <laughs> okay, so that is Hurricane Girl. Next up, I read a poetry collection, Not Like Me. I think it's my only poetry collection so far this year, but it's called A Hundred Lovers by Richie Hoffman. This book is gay as hell. And I liked it. Um, if you like queer anything, I would recommend this book. If you are gay and you want to read poetry, I recommend this book. Poetry is something that I sometimes have a hard time with, as many do. I, sometimes the abstraction or like vagueness that can sometimes come with, you know, minimal text can be a little bit, I don't know, just difficult for me as a reader to kind of get my mind around. I read a lot of novels, so it's just different. I have to like shift my brain when I'm reading poetry. But some of the poems in here are just incredible. It's very much rooted in the body and longing in art. I think this book, it worked the most for me when it was focused on the more like body, sexual things, the vibes there. But I think when it delved into like art and the references therein, I don't really know anything about art. So some of that kind of flew over my head. But I do think if you like authors such as like Garth Greenwell and his book Cleanness, I think this book feels very in conversation with that novel. And so queer poems, if you like that, I would definitely read this one. It's a quick little read. And it's a gorgeously constructed book as well. It's like this nice hardback size and the actual poems, the titles are like in this nice purple. I know this author has shared this poem before and I'm gonna share it with you too. It's very short, but I'll put it here. Or actually, I'll just do a screenshot. Why am I making my life more difficult? Um, if you want like a sample of what's going on in this one. I recommend it. Next up, this is the best book that I read this month, hands down. It's Cold Enough for Snow by Jessica Au. This book just came out recently, I think in February, and this is a very slim, teeny tiny little novel with one of my favorite covers of the year so far. It speaks for itself, but it's delicious. This book is ruminative, reflective, travel-y, beautiful and precise little novel. It basically follows a mother and daughter who are traveling to Tokyo together. It's told in a bunch of like vignette style sections in which this relationship is kind of considered and thinking about the impacts or like the, the feelings that come with traveling with a loved one and what that means and how it like plays on a relationship and the things that are left unsaid versus stated explicitly and just kind of like the inherent things that you know about the person that you're traveling with with, with a loved one and like the weird like specificity of that experience if that makes sense and this book is deeply philosophical in that sense they talk about like the weather they talk about horoscopes they talk about writing family and memory and they visit like museums together and consider art and so if you like books that have the sense of like displacement or like having characters be put in a new new area and them kind of like thinking about about what that means and just if you like books that are kind of like arty and philosophical for example i would say rachel cusk i think that's a really spot on comparison i feel like anything that is of the style is compared to her though and i want to stop recommending or like always making that comparison i feel like it's getting like similar to like otessa moshfeg like always comparing books that are like generally have certain vibes to them i feel like it's kind of weak so if i think of a better <laughs> i don't know comparison I will think of it but I think that's it's kind of true in this case in terms of having the book be more about the thoughts and ideas and musings rather than a plot but I do like the plot here in terms of having two characters in a new location and like the questions of like tourism and what it means to be in a new location and like the joys of exploration yeah thinky vibes only in this book and I loved it so that was the best book I read gorgeous gorgeous girls love short books full of longing Okay, and not to be a bummer, but the next two books are my least favorite that I've read this month. And I'm kind of surprised about both of them. So the first one is Hell of a Book by Jason Mott. And I was really looking forward to this book because it won the National Book Award. And that's like huge praise. And I've seen a lot of love for this book. And I will preface this review by saying I think what Jason Mott, the themes that he's exploring here are so critically important and I think a lot of his reflections and examinations on being black in America and being a black writer in America and the expectations that 
come with that from publishing and from readers and you know having like an online presence what all that means for black writers today this like inherent requirement for black authors to write about race in a certain way i think he unpacks those ideas really well in certain sections of this book however i think as a novel as a story i think this book kind of loses itself in its setup and in its attempts to be an unreliable narrator auto fictiony trauma plot e book. So we have this sort of dual timeline going on here. We follow one character who's a young boy named Soot, and then we also follow the writer that I've, I'm hinting at. He's going on tour to promote his, you know, best-selling book, and we know that it's become like a huge phenomenon, but it's not really stated what goes on in this book that he's written, and there is a sense of unreliability unreli for this primary character, the adult here, in terms of... It's so hard to talk about this book because it's so meta that it's like it, it kind of it's very circular and all the things kind of tie together and i don't want to spoil anything but we as readers see the story of this kid named soot who lives in this rural town in the recent past these are also characters it seems to be in this author's novel so you question like whether the past timeline you're reading is actually the book that the author has written or if there's something more going on to the story and what i just didn't like about this book is that there's this sense of unreliability throughout that really <sighs> i'm finding just played out for lack of a better word like I, I wish there's a lot of passages in here that look at police brutality and Jason Mott's ideas on being black in America and all these things I think the individual examinations are so well done but I think in terms of trying to craft this kind of like like this kind of gotcha novel of like your expectations for what the book is and how those two things kind of come together and how the author of this book in the book the character of the author who's unnamed he is so he like admits that he's unreliable and that he can't remember things about his past and what's going on and as a reader you're just kind of like okay like and like wh what is this all building to i think the conceit of the novel just did not work for me but i think the ideas are important to put it simply um there's a recent article that i've been talking a lot about on my channel i have a video with cj reads it's about what's called like the trauma plot and I think this book, in that article, it was criticized for being a clear example of of trauma plot and how it's not maybe the best um, form for a novel. And I completely agree with the critic, Perul Sagal. I think the book kind of loses itself in this attempt of kind of hiding the trauma of the character within the plot and folding in on itself too many times to the point where it kind of just collapses and that's just my that's my take on it I, I agree with the critic there and yeah i'm kind of over the trauma plot in fiction i think i think this book really is an example of how hiding so much from the reader when we know something is up and not just addressing it expressly can lead to some creative fumbles in my opinion as a reader i think that's my thoughts on that i hope that made any sort of sense and then finally I have The Idiot by Elif Batuman. I don't know what happened with this because it took me, I think, about a month, you know, like a week to read this book. I was, I loved the first 300 pages. Like when I tell you I loved the first 300 pages, like this book is looking at a young woman who, who was a freshman at Harvard in 1995. Email has just been invented or like used by the general public so she's a freshman i love a campus novel i love a coming of age novel and it's also a bit of a love story in terms of our main character she falls in love with this guy who's a bit of a fuck boy for lack of a better word and they communicate over email and so what this book is all about is language it's a novel it's told in fragments and the entire book to me feels like the author considering what language can do in a novel and the limits of it and what kind of fun things you can do with language and the kind of silly things of it the idea of different languages and what that all means and using that to kind of explore the questions of a young woman as she grows into her adulthood and deals with love for the first time and is a freshman at college and is very you know exploratory and thinking about what she wants to do and her ideas of life and trying to make sense of everything around her hence why it's called The Idiot, her not really knowing anything, and you see her trying to get to the root of what the meaning of life is and what she should be doing as a human and all of that, right? Love. However, the first half of the book is set at college, and then the second half, I think mostly the second half, is set abroad when she gets an opportunity to study abroad. And from there, the last 100 pages, y'all are gonna come for me. I know people love this book, but the last 100 pages are not it. They're not it. If you agree with me, please 
have my back in the comments because I know people are going to be mad. <laughs> but like the way the book fell apart though, it came back together like in the last like 10 pages though. I loved the closing of the book. But that 100 pages just felt like she was trying to hit a page count and it was just like boring as hell. We had a bunch of new characters and a new family that was introduced and, and it was just like random reflections and things that the main character was doing. It was so boring. It was just so boring to read. And I've never done such like a one, like I've never read a book that I was loving so much and all of a sudden I was like, wait, what? what is going on? I will still, I think, read the sequel to this book called Either Or. I have a copy of it actually. That was kindly sent to me by the publisher. I requested it when I was loving the book and I was like, I wanna read the sequel like soon after this because it's so good. And now I'm kind of like, eat, but I know the sequel is shorter and I'm hoping that, I think there's been a lot of criticism of this book too. Like I think I'm, I'm probably not alone in this based on like Goodreads reviews and stuff. Not that that's really a metric to go off of. That's another story, but yeah, I don't know. The last hundred pages were boring as hell and that doesn't really happen in books that I read. Like it was so weird. I also read this for a long period of time. So I'm wondering like if I had read it quicker, would I have not felt bored by the end of it? Like I wanted to get it done, but I think I wanted to get it done because I was bored. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so th that is my February. It was kind of like a weird mixed bag of books, but I will tell you as a preview for March, I'm gonna try to film my March wrap up like next week once it's the end of March instead of in at the end of April essentially. But March is banging lads. Like it's so many good books, so many good books. I'm living, I'm living. Like I have a new all time favorite already. I have a huge book that I've been reading for three months that I finished. You probably know what it is if you watch my channel. But March will be, I'll be giving you some hot wrecks. So subscribe if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.